in terms of de-stressing or it's even like getting mm. in touch with your emotions, right? Like what would you suggest people actually do mm -hmm. in regards to allow themselves to calm down? Obviously, Wim yeah. Hof breathing is something that's going to help you. Yeah. <laughs> and that's one example. Yeah. What, what are some so, others? So just like, you know, we mentioned earlier, just like I, I, I would never recommend someone um, take a ton of supplements if they weren't going to change their diet. Mm. You know, if they were just going to eat a terrible diet, the supplements is probably aren't going to do you much good, or at least not as, as much good as they could if you change your diet. Same kind of thing here is that I could tell you to do all these different things that have been shown to improve your heart rate variability and lower your, your stress. But if you don't find the things that are actually stressing you out and work to mitigate them or remove them, if you can, then you're just, you know, you know, putting out the fire without catching the arsonist, you know? Um, and so that's the first thing I'd say is try to identify the things in your life that have the most impact on you stress wise, which it can be difficult. And sometimes you're going to find out that those things you can't get rid of. Maybe it's that job that you're, you need, or maybe it's your kids. You can't get rid of them, you know, like, and so it, then it becomes changing your perspective of those yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and how you view them, but then also sometimes, and I've worked with clients on this, sometimes it's, it's, it's more you than it is the thing that's stressing you out every time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so like, so I had a client one time that was, you know, her kids really stressed her out and I said, okay, well next time, and I'm not like any like therapist or anything like that. I was just like, well, next time think about what you said to them first or how you presented to them or whatever. And she realized that her, her initial, um, you know, feedback or response to them was arming them. So then now they're armed and they're going to come back at her. And then she was like, why are you doing that? And it's just like, so then she started to work on changing how she approached them or whatever. And it totally changed the whole situation most of the time. Right. Um, so there's that. Um, and that was just a little tangent or whatever, but um, that's true. My sister's one thing that, oh, sorry. yeah, no, one thing that I came across um, not too long ago um, was a study that where they looked at um, um, the effects of stress on different people within a company. Right. Um, and they expected to find that the people with the most responsibility and the higher end, high demand, high stress jobs were going to have the most negative effects to their health. Right. Um, specifically, this study was looking at atherosclerosis. Right. And so, so they're looking at the CEOs, the people with all the responsibility, and they found that those people had um, the least effects on their health. They were, you know, they were, um, they were in, cause they were in control. They had the power, they had the responsibility, um, they had a lot of stress, yeah, and high demand jobs, but they were in control. And it was the people lower down in the company that, you know, didn't have quite as much job security or didn't have predictable work hours um, or, or predictable salary or things like that. Those people were the ones that had the highest stress. So the moral of the story there is that if you can identify stresses in your life that make you feel like you don't have control, or they give you a lack of predictability and it's hard to anticipate things like that. Um, those are the stresses you want to work to mitigate the most because those have been shown in research to have the most detrimental effect on your health. Crazy. And I think one of the main things that like people can do to do that is actually have some sort of like spiritual practice or take yeah. some time for themselves to, you know, either meditate or get some stillness, like because I coach entrepreneurs and like high performers, I created this like diagram that had this, it's sort of like an energy wheel I like to use. I use a lot of wheels in like my diagrams and in terms of just like getting balance between your mind and your body and it's sort of like, you know, your parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous state. I think one of the most important things which is overlooked now, especially in like 2021, is just like stillness and self-control. And if you firstly take time to take some stillness within your day, it could be a small amount, like a real small amount. It allows you just to like, clear your mind and think about all the things that you need to think about, sort of like you spread them all over the table and then you sort of dissect and make them a whole lot smaller. And then you sort of be able to, because you have that stillness, just think about all the things that you need to have a little bit of control with. And just for the people that like I've been working with and the people that, that, that I coach, as soon as they add that in, it's 
and they and they can stick to that either consistently on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. And it's like depending, obviously, because how much they have, they, they need a little bit more. But it just has like these just these awesome results that you can see. And I've used it myself when I track things for like my heart rate variability. That when I when I spend half an hour to an hour a day just with complete stillness, which is sometimes so hard to do to like book it in and be like, no, I'm just going to take this. <laughs> Everything feels so much better. The stress goes way down. I make way better decisions and I end up getting, end up being like way more productive with everything that I'm doing, which I find is like fantastic. Yeah, no, it, it's totally true. If you take that time to, to clear your mind, to slow your mind, to calm your mind, you're going to be way more productive when you, when you do have to be, you know? Yeah. And I, I just have a theory. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. You, you may know some research, you may not. And mine is, I think that we sort of, after reading the book Deep Work by Cal Newport, I read, I read that and just um, attending a, a, just a couple of courses on um, health and heart rate variability was just, this had the own click in my own mind. I'd just love to hear your thoughts. <laughs> there may not be nothing mm -hmm. on it, just a theory that I've had. And yeah. essentially it's like, we need to have a certain amount of stillness within our just lifestyle. And whether that be daily, weekly, monthly, six monthly, whatever it is, is we sort of have a tank of it. And if we're not getting that stillness in throughout like our day, it will just back up. So for example, it may, and I, I believe everyone has different tolerances. And I, I believe like, let's say for one person, like, it could be something around like having half an hour of stillness a day. Well, if you don't get that from Monday to Friday, then Sunday, you need to spend half the day chilling. If you are all go for a month, then you may need the weekend to just do nothing or three days, like public holiday, come at us. <laughs> or yeah. like if you don't do it throughout an entire year, it's when people take holidays, they'll take the full six to four weeks off and just do nothing for four to six weeks. Um, feel like don't do anything productive, but they come back and, oh, I feel so much better. Then they have to wait a whole nother year before they can take like their holidays again. And like, I just have the theory that if you don't do this within a certain period of time, your body sort of will shut you down, make you get sick or intentionally make you feel terrible so that you take time to have stillness to actually recover itself because it's like, oh, I'm better now. Just just to like get rid of stress. As a theory yeah. that I've been playing with, what are your no, thoughts I, on that? <laughs> and I, I, I like it, you know, and it's a good kind of um, framework, I guess, for people to, to use to make sure they get that in, you know? Um, and I do think you're right, like, you know, when we get that imbalance in the autonomic system, uh, lots of times we get like in this hyper stress state and all of a sudden we get fatigued or we get like this shutdown. And that's, we need to listen to that. That's your body saying, Hey, we gotta, we gotta shut this down for a while. Right. Um, and, it, and it's so like, it's so simple, you know, to just listen to your body a little bit, you know, just like, if you think you hear, like you, let's say you hear someone in a podcast or, or you read a book or something like that. And there's this new diet, you want to try it, you try the diet and you've been doing it for a few months and it just sucks. You can't do it. You're like, this is not, or, or even your health gets worse or something. People are like, but I read the book and it says that it's better for you. So I know it's been, they keep trying to do it. And it says like, well, maybe we should listen to our body a little bit. And, and maybe this isn't the right diet for us, you know, um, or something like that. So it's just listen to your body. And then, you know, I, I think that, have you ever heard of the idea of uh, dopamine fasting? No, I haven't. I'm, I'm yeah. super intrigued, man. I'm super intrigued. Yeah, so like, like dopamine is the, it's like the feel good, you know, hormone that is secreted. Like, so anytime you do something like, you know, even like writing something down on a checklist and then checking it off gives you a little dopamine release. It makes you a little Putting surge. Putting a post like, up yeah. on social media. Yeah. You're like, yeah, great. You know, like I did something or, um, or even just looking Achieving at social a business media, goal. Yeah. even looking at social media and seeing the little likes and the comments and everything like that. Like yeah. um, it can be as simple as that, or it can be as, as, um, making, a sale. Uh, making a sale. Um, it could be anything like that, but the, the issue is, is that there's too much of it and that we get addicted to these dopamine hits, you know, so that we have to have them all the time. So when we sit and do nothing, we can't. And people, you know, there's like the studies that show that people, people reach for their phones like a million times a day or whatever it is, you know, because we need that dopamine. We're addicted to that dopamine hit. And so a really good thing that I heard, it's not my idea, but I heard from somebody else, um, uh, it's called dopamine fasting. And it's kind of what you were talking about where like, if you didn't do any stillness or, or, or whatever you want to call it during the week, you're going to have to take half of, of Saturday or half of Sunday and just sit and, you know, no dopamine stimulus whatsoever, which is really, really hard to do. That means like no talking to people. Um, it means like no phone, no movies, no, no reading. Cause that could, you know, stimulate dopamine. So that that's really hard to do. 
but it could be an amazing reset um, to get you off this addictive dopamine hit that, that, that we, you know, that society around us has addicted to, you know, like the notifications on the phone, the email. Oh yeah, I got to check it, you know? And it's just, it's, uh, it could be really, really useful, but if you did it in small amounts throughout the week, you wouldn't have to take, you know, half the weekend to, to detox from that dopamine hit or those dopamine hits. Dude, that is crazy. I love that. I'm going to look into that a little bit more dopamine fasting. I really like yeah. that. 